Why? Why is this a thing? Hello and welcome back to A Real Horror Show, the YouTube channel dedicated to all things horror. So in today's video I want to talk and potentially rant about the latest buzzword I've heard popping up around the horror community and the internet in general. Of course because you've seen the title of this video that buzzword is elevated horror. A term that's been floating around the internet for quite a while now but has definitely gained more popularity in recent times. So what exactly is elevated horror and why does it cause such a divide between film fans and horror fans alike and why does it make me feel like I'm going f***ing insane? <laughs> Well, let's find out. So, generally speaking, elevated horror is a term used to label and pigeonhole horror films that deal with and reflect on social and political issues and convey a deep or meaningful message to the audience. Essentially, these are films that contain a lot of social commentary and leave the viewer with something to think about. Other attributes of elevated horror include experimental movie making or artsy cinematography and they tend to rely more on disturbing the audience both emotionally and psychologically rather than rely on stuff like gore and the, the classic stuff. But it's basically used to segregate these popular psychological horror films because in my opinion that is the right way of categorizing these movies from the rest of the horror genre. It's pretty much inferring that these movies in this category are superior or elite to the likes of films within the other subgenres, such as the slasher movie. Of course, this is where the fundamental issues with elevated horror arise. So my first and probably biggest issue with elevated horror is just how seemingly elitist and absolutely unnecessary this term really is. Let me set the record straight right now and for the people at the back, horror, horror has, has always, always been, been elevated. elevated. In fact, why don't we look at a few quick examples? So here's a selection of notable movies throughout the history of horror that have dealt with social and political issues and have a message for the audience. Frankenstein, 1931. Frankenstein's monster is one of horror's most iconic characters, and James Whale's 1931 film adaptation starring Boris Karloff remains as not only one of the most beloved universal monster movies, but one of the most beloved in the entire genre. Of course, Frankenstein is a story about a doctor, played here by Colin Clive, who brings to life a creature assembled with the body parts of numerous corpses. It's a pretty normal hobby, I guess, to have on the weekends. And as we know, this goes terribly wrong once the doctor's creature begins to wreak havoc. The story explores the dangers of playing God and creating something that ultimately leads to destruction. Now, this is something that, of course, we've seen time and time again throughout history. Human beings have a great power for creating incredible things, but an equally great power to destroy. The nature of humanity is also the main thing that I personally take away from this movie, as ultimately it's society's misunderstandings and treatment towards others that lead the monster, who is initially a passive and innocent creature, to act violent. The Exorcist 1973 Now this is a movie that certainly needs no introduction. 1973's The Exorcist, written by William Peter Blatty and directed by William Freakin, is probably the most famous horror movie of all time, and for good reason. Not only is it considered one of the scariest movies ever made, mainly due to the legendary performance and presentation of Reagan, played by Linda Blair, but it also comes with an incredible story. Now make no mistake, this movie is equally about a priest who is losing his faith as much as it is about a girl being possessed by the devil, if not more so. Throughout The Exorcist, Damien Carras, played by Jason Miller, grapples with his wavering belief in God. His belief and faith are dented even further when dealing with the grief and regret that looms over him after the passing of his ill mother. Not only does Carras doubt faith, but also the possibility that supernatural forces even exist. Basically, Karaz embodies the struggles faced by individuals who are torn between faith and reason. In the climax of the film, Karaz makes the ultimate Christ-like sacrifice by inviting the demon to possess him, ending his own life in the process to save Reagan. This is a symbol of both his redemption and the triumph of good against evil. That being said, The Exorcist is a film that can be analysed to death. It has so many themes and details to explore, but one thing's for sure, it's a masterpiece. <laughs> they Live 1988 Last but not least, we have They Live from 1988, directed by the master of horror himself, 
John Carpenter. The movie follows a down and out called John Narda, played by Rowdy Roddy Piper, who comes across a pair of sunglasses that shows the world for what it truly is. As it turns out, the majority of the wealthy social elite are aliens who want to take over the world, and they are using subliminal messages within the media to keep the population under control. And when Roddy Piper isn't spending nearly 10 minutes in a fistfight with Keith David, he attempts to save the world. Now, I really don't think I need to explain to you the themes and messages from this movie, as they really couldn't be more in your face. I've got to say how remarkable it is, how this movie's messages and themes are even more relevant today than ever before. Now, those are just a few examples of horror movies that explore deep themes, with the earliest being from the 1930s. And I could go on and on and on, talking about many culturally important horror movies that have had something to say, such as George A. Romero's Dead Trilogy, which include Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead and Day of the Dead. Now, this trilogy explores a lot of themes, including racial tensions within the United States. The movie out of those, though, that is certainly the most on the nose has got to be Dawn of the Dead. The idea of setting the movie in a shopping mall is absolutely genius, as it makes it impossible not to compare the hordes of flesh-eating zombies desperate to eat brains to a crowd of shoppers desperate to grab a bargain when it's sale day. An absolutely perfect visual critique of consumerism within our society. But getting back to the topic at hand, the implication that this new wave of horror film is in any way superior to the other subgenres in horror that preceded it is almost an insult to horror fans, horror filmmakers of the past and to the horror genre itself. It's clear to me why this subgenre has been described as horror movies for people who don't like horror. I simply just don't understand why this term even exists, or why it's even necessary unless you believe that the horror genre is just full of crap movies, which it isn't, and that these elevated horror movies should be segregated from everything else within the horror genre. I just find it so strange how this term is so dismissive to its own genre that it belongs in. Seriously though, you don't hear people talking about elevated comedy films or elevated action films. I mean, how ridiculous does that actually sound? No matter the genre, there are good movies, bad movies, movies that have something to say, and movies that don't which is fine. Why do movies within the horror genre need that distinction? Now I know I just said that the horror genre isn't full of crap, but yes, okay, I know, there's plenty of sleazy dog shit horror movies, believe me, I know I've seen them. But again, look at action and comedy. I mean, how many crap movies exist within those two genres? Come on. But when it comes down to it, horror has always had something to say. Now, horror is a genre that's always been snubbed, dismissed, and not taken seriously, especially by critics, for the most part. I still don't believe the genre requires a term like elevated horror to take it more seriously. Overall, I think that the term does more bad for horror than it does good, and it kind of conveys the idea that horror is a genre just full of trash, unless, of course, it ticks all the right check boxes to be considered elevated or high art. Speaking of art, another apparent characteristic of this elevated horror is artsy cinematography or experimental movie making. And I just want to put it out there, but in my opinion, being experimental does not equal good or a free pass. I'm looking at you, Skinnamarink. But that's a discussion for another time. But again, horror is a genre that has always been experimental and has always featured both artsy and beautiful cinematography. I mean, some quick examples I can think of just off the top of my head include David Lynch's Eraserhead from 1977, Dario Argento's Suspiria, also from the same year, and Stanley Kubrick's The Shining from 1980. Now, to play devil's advocate for just a minute, I do like to see both sides of an argument and I can see how there may potentially be some positives to the term elevated horror. The main one being that I guess it's a helpful way for people who enjoy movies that are categorised within the elevated horror subgenre to find other movies like it, but I still don't think that makes the term warranted. So in conclusion, I believe that elevated horror is an elitist and unnecessary term that implies that the movies existing outside of that subgenre are subpar or crap in comparison I guess, and as we all know, that obviously is not the case. And if anything, I do find it as somewhat of an insult to horror movies as a whole. Having a deep message or 
dealing with social and political issues and challenging your audience to think does not equal a good movie and nor does it make it more superior to anything else. I mean, I've seen plenty of movies with deep themes or a message to put across to the audience and a lot of them suck. I mean, I love the Evil Dead trilogy. Evil Dead 2 specifically is my favourite horror film of all time. But it doesn't have any themes or deep messages to explore or anything like that. And it's an absolutely phenomenal movie. I mean, I'm sure you could probably analyse it and get something out of it. But people can analyse anything and find some kind of meaning within stuff. You can extract an analysis or meaning from anything if you try hard enough. But I think I've ranted on about this for long enough now. And I don't mean to come across as so triggered just by a stupid little buzzword. But due to the popularity and spread of the term elevator, horror, I do think it's worthy of a discussion. So tell me what you think about elevated horror in the comment section below. Do you like the term? Do you hate the term? Let's have a chat about it. I also want to take a quick moment just to say that I really appreciate the support given to me on this channel. I apologise though that I haven't uploaded a video in the past few weeks. That's for a few reasons, mainly because I'm trying to update the quality of my videos and also I've been working on a lot of new content ideas and writing scripts for future videos that I think you guys are really going to enjoy and appreciate. So again, thank you so much guys for the support, every like, comment and every subscription really does mean a lot to me and until next time guys, take care.